Right. It's a record, I think. Yes, it does. It's on the 
Uh, our section is page by page, page to pray to God. I'm paid, but then it goes up row, and then it gets paid again, and it goes back to me. And at some point, I think it becomes like French something row. Huh? I think it becomes like French something row again, as it said, pop it off, pop it off. Do you want me just to file them? Does someone want to look at them? Yeah, I'll look at them if nobody else is. Uh, no, these are different. Um, I believe so. They just came in today. Oh, yeah, they're different. Yeah, these are different names. So, any other mail? Uh, Except for those, which we'll get to in a minute, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so we're just keeping that new business. Uh, actually, I probably should have moved it to old business, but with that 5 to 15 K Street is off till April. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because I saw the agenda up there, and I was like, why is it not tonight? Yeah, I should have. Oh, well, I just want to keep it on there, also. Okay. I'm not going to remember where to put it back. So That's what I yeah. was thinking. I was it's just like, continuing business. Yeah, that's fine. I should have moved it down below. No, that's totally fine. It's just postponed today. So then to 5A, um, 87 Gulf Street. Um, so as the commission knows, um, we were taking a look. Um, we reached out to two entities from the environmental corporation with a family group that I worked with um, when I was the serving as planning board assistants in Helen. Mm-hmm. They were doing some conservation work. And uh, BSC Group, who I understand is um, familiar to the Conservation Commission um, from previous things, and they're working on the rail trail, etc. Um, so I know that we have been waiting for quotes, and I did share with the board, the commission this morning, um, such set of quotes. So CEI um, split their two projects into two. One for Pleasant Hill Estates and then for um, Golf Road. And Pleasant Hill Estates, you know, what they reviewed were the enforcement order that we issued to um, the uh, property owners over there, as well as the site map that was provided. Um, and they do their due diligence doing that's um, not research. Um, and what, and this is similar to both of them. Um, what the suggested work would be would be um, one site visit to review conditions with the above to reference an enforcement order and provide recommendations on site stabilization and restoration of imp- impact and wetland resource areas. <laughs> the site assessment will be conducted by Bob Hartzell, a principal wetland water resources scientist who leads the ecological services practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has expertise in wetland ecology, wetland migration design, mitigation design, and regu- reg- related regulatory. I was going to say, wetland migration. <laughs> but that means like replication. Um, <laughs> Self replication. <laughs> the, the letter report. Um, so, CEI will provide a letter report which will include the findings of the site assessment and associated recommendations. The letter report will include the following description and estimated area of extent of wetland impacts for each impacted wetland resource area, recommendations with regard to removal of sediment deposited in wetland resource areas, and other wetland restoration activities, recommendations with regard to stabilizing eroding upland areas contributing sediment to adjacent wetland, recommended procedural steps with regard to the current EO for the site. Um, for example, require a timeline for site restoration activities and associated plans, some minerals, possible coordination with Mass DEP, other enforcement options such as fines, mm-hmm. and uh, an attendance at one in person Conservation Commission public hearing to discuss CEI's findings and recommendations. And for um, Pleasant Hill Estates, the provide, uh, the CI will provide the above services for a cost of $4,000 build on a time and materials basis and is available to start immediately upon notice to proceed. Um, and then there is a hierarchy of the various um, amounts per hour for the various staff that are working on that to indicate that Bob Parks will be um, the principal investigator. 
Similarly, have you, have you ever um, interacted with him? I know you said you. Yeah, for a peer review. Okay. Um, when I was in college, uh, okay. I interacted with C. I. and with Bob. Okay. Sorry to make you repeat no, that. No, I was no, just saying, no. is that the guy you were talking about? So, that one, he seemed to seem felt more straightforward, mm -hmm. um, more so than the golf road. Mm -hmm. um, and so, that was his uh, quote. Um, with regards to Golf Road, um, he, he reviewed, he I reviewed SiteMap, he reviewed the enforcement order that was issued in 2019, and then there were um, PowerPoint slides that I think the Trails Committee put together back in 2019 that I found that have the photographs. Yes, the photographs. Oh, so yeah. even from there, you already made that assessment. Like, that was significant. Um, so, in addition to that, um, you know, he got to review through desktop research. Um, he is indicating that will be done in a two-person team um, because it's probably going to require some heavy machine. Um, so, Bob Hartzell and Matt Lundstedt, a um, PE. CI principal who leads CI civil engineering practice and has expertise in stream geomorphology and sediment transport. Um, so the CI will provide a letter report which will include the findings of the site assessment and associated recommendations. Um, similarly, description of estimated area of extent of wetland impacts um, for each impacted wetland resource area, for example, BVW, bank land, underwater bodies, and waterways. This assessment will consider downstream downstream transport of sediment within Lebanon Brook to confluence with the Quinn Rock River to the extent practical practical in a single visit. Recommendations with regards to removal of sediment deposited in well resource areas and other work and restoration activities. Recommendations with regards to stabilizing and really upland areas contributing sediment to adjacent wetland. Um, and so there, there are notes on these that there will be site access being granted by the property owner. So presumably, Mr. Um, Gamble would allow, you know, if, if we had um, a, 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 a well and specialist come out on behalf of the Conservation Commission, presumably for Pleasant Hill Estates, we would start with Mr. Gamble's property. Um, but with this one, I think this is town property to an extent. Yeah. Well, so, right. Do you have any updates? We, we have, have a little bit of an update. I, I did not stop down there and look because the uh, owner had said he was done his work and we were waiting for this. Okay. Because we just stopped by there. If I go down there, it's just going to be, yeah, it's the same as it was. Well, we just stopped down there and guys walked up and they have taken up the stuff uh, from under the Keystone Bridge. However, my my concern is that slope that is just going to erode, right? Yeah, I, I mean, anything that they took out I'm is going to be like you're not seeing any fresh work. Oh, it's all it's on top of the bridge. The bridge is not under the bridge is large. No, I mean fresh work as it has been done since it left. since the property owner had said, okay, we did it, we're done. And we went to the next step there. That was like in November, correct? December. 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 Yeah. 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 But the way it is, it's somehow a soul check from the land of it. It gets a good heavy when it is back down to the ground. It's not stabilized at all. Um, Weapon wise, what we're trying to be is the, the remediation is trying to achieve the initial weapon area that was in. Right. The weapon on the 
these main streets out of the Skull Rock Culver. Proceeded under the Culver, and then proceeded down to run up the channel. Yeah, that's that was the wetland. Huh? Yes, yes. That's still the thing that's in the channel. Because if you look at the railroad train sharing, it's called right there. It's this way. The wetland was this way. It goes, under, it goes underneath the car, from, from East Main Street, on East Main Street, East Main Street, there was a body of water on East Main Street. It went under the bridge and then turned left and then went up the canal. Um, one of the things about your um, GS, the GS maps lists the canal as Lebanon Brook, and that's incorrect. Lebanon Brook comes down into the mill pond comes down underneath Aspen Avenue into the mill pond and then proceeds through Brookside Terrace and back to Quinnipaw. Mm -hmm. That's Lebanon Brook. Yeah. But the GS map, if you look on the town's website, the GS map refers to the canal as Lebanon Brook. And it's, 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 it's an unnamed tributary, correct? It's, 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 Lebanon Brook, they put it on the hill right now. No, but I'm saying in reality, is it an unnamed? In reality, it's a, it's a canal that came from Quinnipaw that ran actually and went up to the Mill Pond. You know, if you know the area, you would say, well, that's crazy, Kevin, because that means water flows uphill. <laughs> but actually, if you use, if you go to where the weir is on Quinnipaw, where the water level was channeled into the chip. Um, yeah. Ken, Ken Pickman actually checked it with his uh, GPS. And actually, there's an eight foot slope, there's an eight foot difference between the level at the river and the level at the mill pond. And that eight feet was enough to have that water mm -hmm. run up to the mill pond. The mill pond was also fed by Lebanon Brook. Mm -hmm. And Lebanon Brook continued out underneath uh, the bridge. Um, but it, <coughs> um, like I said, I haven't been down here to see it. Uh, I will go down. It, it, but at this point here, if, if the property owner says, okay, we've done our work and it's all done and it's all good and um, at that point there, can they just go back and start doing more work? They would need it. Well, it has to be under the enforcement order. It has to be with their approval or they need if they're working in what was a wetland, and through their own violation, it is no longer a wetland, it's still under your purview. So they would need an RDA or an order of conditions. They can. No one's made any official acceptance that they're finished. Right. He knows, we that, just, he knows that we're... We just, we just okay. made sure we had clearance from him yeah. that we can send a wetlands expert to certify his progress there, mm -hmm. and that's exactly the approach we're going to be taking. Right. Which, so, yeah. uh, what is the quote from the CIS for Gulf Street? For Gulf Street, $6,200. Uh, uh, Practical uh, question so, before we go on. What is even the available funds? Uh, at the last meeting I presented to the commission, I think the current level of the balance was 92000 So, just other components of their report, uh, recommendations with regard to removal sediment, deposit in wetland resource areas, and other wetland restoration activities, recommendations with regard to stabilizing and eroding upland areas, contributing sediment to adjacent wetland. Um, if site access permission is not granted by the property owner, CI will reassess the eroding areas to the extent possible from the adjacent parcel. Um, recommended procedural steps with regard to the current EO for the site. For example, require timeline for site restoration activities and associated plans and middles, possible coordination with mass DEP and other enforcement options such as fines, um, attendance at one person, one in person conservation commission public hearing to discuss the recommendation. Um, like I mentioned, um, $6,200. Does that include one day with heavy equipment, or was that? I, I noticed there was an extra fee, three thousand something per day. But there, I will get some clarification from Robert. The suggestion was um, 
that you would need that for golf room, presumably. Um, is but I want to be clear. Is it in the six thousand or is it extra? So then you're talking nine thousand for just one. Right. Mm-hmm. Like yes. This. Yes. There is the addition on top of the hours. Um, so for BSC group, um, as you know, I provided the same sort of information that I did for but, um, to CEI to BSC group. They're also aware of the impacts of um, in on Gulf Gulf Road, Gulf Street. Um, so they prepared a scope of services, understanding that um, let's see, and understands that John Soccer seeks professional wetland services to determine the extent of the legal wetland field. That is occurred on two sites in town for purposes of the state of assessing accurate fines in accordance with the town's well and bylaw, which is based on, upon a square footage per day determination. The following understanding is based upon information provided by the Northern Town Public Conservation Agent in January 2024. BSC understands that one site, the Pleasant Hill Estate Subdivision and abutting property, has experienced significant sedimentation within jurisdictional wetlands. With a distinct sediment plume adjacent to ongoing construction, the extent of sedimentation within this wetland should be accessible, accessible um, using hand tools, and as such, BSC does not anticipate requiring any equipment on the site. But on site conditions may affect such determination. BSC ecologists have seen the second site of 87 Fall Street, the end of a close red trail for which BSC recently provided permitting support to the town. This site appears to have experienced a significant ongoing intentional deposition of fill affecting jurisdictional public resource areas. Based on our knowledge of the site, we anticipate that investigation of the extent of fill will require estimation using existing topography and historic topographic and wetland data. Fill appears to be significant enough that excavation will require a significant amount of effort from heavy machinery. BSC anticipates that an estimate of the extent of fill will be feasible without requiring excavation. The conditions in the seal will clarify the effort needed to accomplish the purposes of the needs for Can I just ask you a question? So they're using hand tools for Pleasant Hill. Oh, okay. Okay, I thought you said hand tools for there. And because you were saying large equipment and I was going to say, when are they doing it? Because if it's like now, the ground is frozen and stuff. Um, but if, if they wait until like spring, it's mushy and they might do more damage. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's catch too. Right. This, this is just to calculate the depth. Yeah, this is not restoration. Right. This is not restoration. They're just calculating. Then why would they need heavy machinery to calculate the depth? Well, if the damage the is six feet deep, <laughs> you might need some heavy equipment to get to the bottom of the like, depth. What kind of heavy equipment? I'm not an Small. engineer, so I'm not an engineer. Well, that's just that we uh, don't emphasize the fact that we're not engineers, which is why we ask right. these people. Uh, I, I, I think they're just this uh, if, if they take the sediments two or three inches, they may use a cotton drum. Right. To, uh, to right, that's what I was asking. If they take a first or two, they may use a coring tool or some, you know, or a uh, yeah. um, If it's three or four feet, uh, you're not going to expect that. You could expect a gentleman to dig a hole mm-hmm. four or five feet deep. deep. It's just a a situation that I, I think they're using their best judgment mm-hmm. as to how they determine that. Right. I just wanted to know because it's a heavy equipment. Yeah, yeah. those would probably be additional questions that we just asked. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not going to know now whether it's going to be the smallest of the next but we can pretty much assume that it's not going to be the biggest. Right. So, so they'll determine what they need. And, uh, and, and I'm sure they're not going to get a machine so big that it would do more damage. They want to wait till the rail trails. I'm not going to get a time because it goes out, right? 
that was just, I was, we were talking about yeah, the yeah, both together, um, because they are presenting both services on everyone. Oh, one. Okay. Um, so BSC provo- uh, proposes to provide a team of two weapon scientists, one of whom shall be a senior ecologist and other one a tra- trained soil scientist to conduct wetland impact and investigations at the two sites. Fill material will be excavated by hand where possible to identify the natural well in service based upon the presence of indicators of hydro soil mm-hmm. and or buried hydrophytic vegetation mm-hmm. and other indicators of jurisdictional well and resources. Where such excavation is not possible, BSC will estimate aerial extent of well and impacts to the greatest extent possible and discuss additional steps and services that may be necessary to refine the determinations. The extent of fill will be marked in the field with flagging and geolocated geolocated with handheld GPS units. BSC will produce a map at each investigation site that shows the extent of impacted wetland with calculated square footage of impact. GPS data will be made available in a georeference CAD format if desired by the session. Um, will they come to a hearing? I'm just trying to, you know. Yeah, compare. Um, yeah, um, it seems like CS or CSI, um, CEI, seems like they're offering a lot more um, um, service solution and... Yeah, one of the questions that I proposed to both of them was how to, <coughs> it was that the point that the property owner raised in the Gulf world was like, so is that, are they going to tell me what to do? So it is identifying like what the steps may be, maybe to suggest how to go about uh, for the Conservation Commission to contemplate a restoration plan for property owners. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to continue with this um, additional services for BSC Group. So spec- services not specified in Section 1, which is what I just described to you, uh, are not included as part of this agreement. Should additional services become necessary based on upon the conclusions derived from the performance of the proposed scope above, they may be performed for the <coughs> fee to be paid on an hourly basis in accordance with the attached BSC fee schedule. The safety of BSC ecological staff is of paramount importance. If excavations reach a depth of four feet, BSC shall cease investigations until such time as a safety plan consistent with ocean trench safety requirements is provided. BSC does not have access to heavy equipment that may be necessary to conduct machine-assisted excavation. Coordination with the client for such equipment shall be necessary if required based on site conditions. Site can be asked technicians. Um, they are able to begin services <coughs> upon receipt of the written authorization to pro- proceed. Um, BSC, BSC has estimated a budget of $345 per hour for the proposed team of two wetland specialists, exclusive of normal direct reimbursable expenses and fees for the services described above. BSC estimates that the Pleasant Hill investigation will require up to 10 hours to conduct. BSC has also estimated 10 hours for the evaluation of the Gulf Street site with no excavation proposed. If excavation using heavy equipment becomes necessary, BSC would discuss available options with the client. The company shall inform the client as soon as practical if the company identifies out of scope tests that are necessary to complete the services described herein. Um, so, in addition to the quoted fee, BSC typically budgets $3,000 to $3,500 as a daily rate for heavy equipment. And what's their, what's their quote? Um, so it would be three, three, three thousand four fifty for each, yeah. for each plus potentially plus potentially a hundred dollars a day. And I don't know what typically is the are mm-hmm. the people that are able to use that heavy equipment if that requires additional staffing mm-hmm. or if those two scientists are also able to use that and not full. Um, but, so that's a contemplation. The CEI did not state heavy machinery or a conversation with them in the property for the Gulf Street. 
and probably could be something discussed. Um, but with regards to the scope of services, it's more spelled out in the CI um, discussion. Um, the BSC group does discuss if there is a requirement for excavation, if that's what the commission wants to mm -hmm. you know, ensure, then there's that additional cost. So it seems like the, um, we need to confirm on uh, CEI's quote how mm -hmm. inclusive that is and what the potentiality is for overruns. Um, because certainly the BSC groups absolutely straightforward told us what the overrun could be at, at an hourly or a, a daily rate. Um, on the surface of it, it doesn't seem like there's a major difference in expense other than the um, CEI quote. Um, being basically larger up front, but it does seem like both of them are going to run pretty equivalent. Well, so 10,200 versus 7,000. Yeah, with what looks like an almost guaranteed promise of being another 3,500 on top of that. couple things. Does it help or hurt to have BSC because they are already with the real trail. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking, Cameron. Thank you. That's certainly something to talk about. Because I was thinking they might be more invested, like psychologically, like, hey, we're working on this project um, anyway. I mean, they're going to be more familiar with it, certainly, but what I'm seeing a lack of is that I like with the other group is they're talking about an actual restoration plan and working directly with. Mass DEP right. as well, where that was not mentioned. It seems like the you know, BSC group will give us tools to assess fines and approach our path forward, but not necessarily presenting what a full restoration plan looks like. Right. In, in this case, having a plan <laughs> and having somebody um, institute that plan might be really good. <laughs> In the situation where it's the, the question I have is if you're on the Gulf Stream property, it's like you can evaluate the area of the wetlands that are within the area that comes up from underneath the bridge and heads to the left and it connects with the cap. The cap still has water in it, even though it has about 30 or 40 tons. Um, and how will they, 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 all they're going to do is evaluate that soil that's still remaining there on top of the original wetland. But this has nothing to do with remediation. So yeah. no, it just determines if it's not true. So it quantifies there is three feet of soil from this point to this point that should have never been put placed there and needs to be removed. Yeah. That would be the following, after they give their report, that would be the following step to say, all right, somebody is responsible for removing that soil. <laughs> We're back at square one. We're back at square one, but we've done our homework. Right. The fines have started because now it's been done and we say, all right, so we have engineers who have, it's not our it's personal, personal opinion. opinion. Right. It's not our personal opinion. It's the engineers who say, this is a violation. It's been a violation since January 1st. And the fine fees are started, and the soil needs to be removed. I'm assuming that at that point the property owner has the ability to say, okay, we'll go back in there and we'll remove that identified violation. Yeah, well, we would have, well, with the CEI group, we'd have a defined um, plan of mitigation and restoration. And which is what the enforcement of the Air Force Plus is doing to comply with. Yes. It's a remedial restoration plan. Yeah. So this might show, all right, we're going to have somebody come in and inspect the wet layers and those fields. That water is still coming from that hill. I can't fill in that hill. So you're like, yeah, great, you've determined, yes, it is happening. I could have told you that. That's great. Go back to where Mike uh, threw me in the 
don't really expect that. And the four of them to put up square walls and silk fences. Yeah, quick. And then four of them. And then they put up a silk fence. Yeah, and then they put up a silk fence. And then they put up a silk fence. And then they put up a silk fence. I use it state-wise in the meat to eat papers, right? Uh, and the gardens, we put that stuff down the store. So landscape cloth. They, exactly, landscape cloth is when you put up. And it's right on that back of the cabinet. And it's just, it still comes down all the time. It's right in the store. So it sounds to me like we need to ask both. Maybe some questions. CEI, does it include heavy equipment? Yeah. And if so, how much? And then for BSC, can they can they refine whether there will be a remediation suggestion? Do you know what I mean? Some of these details that CEI has, yeah. are they just not as, as specific in when they say, you know, you know, and is there and do they have will they come up for one hearing? Mm -hmm. Then we're comparing apples and, and apples yes. and apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. exactly. And then I think you guys need to think about you know, so you have 19,000. Yeah. This, this is, we're not going to get this money back. We can ask them. We have the right, we have that law that says that we can ask them to pay for this. Neither one of them is likely to pay for this. No, but is this a case where we can bring suit against at least the um, landowner that is physically there and communicating with us? Should we need to? I mean, we do have a town attorney, do we not? You do. Because my objective, as long as we are communicating with a landowner, to at least retrieve that side from what we're putting in. Right. Um, and I think that's a reasonable goal. I don't know whether or not we're ever going to get a hold of our Pleasant Hills estate. Person, but we certainly, if we can, have a quantified amount that between fines and the cost of this restoration, we could launch a fairly decent lawsuit against them to get that back. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be so there are resources there that can be something. something. You would think. I you mean, would think, but that would take we still have the a, legal bills you would incur in that. We still Do you know what I mean? By the time you get it up. Bonded. Correct, and the town should not consider releasing that bond until this is resolved out. Which one? The, the Pleasant Hills State. That has a bond on the road. So, yeah. So there, we're not completely toothless here. Mm -hmm. You know, they can ignore us all they want, but there's at least whatever the value of that bond is tied up. In this. The other thing I would suggest is, and I know we want the perfect amount, you know what I mean? Like, we want to know exactly what happened yeah. and how much there is there. Can we, can they estimate, do you know what I mean? Could they, can we get, can they, can those scientists do it a pretty good job of estimating what's there for less money? Do you know what I mean? Yes, so, but I also want them to do it to an extent where it would stand up for right. court. Right, well, absolutely, I'm just, I'm just suggesting, yes. you know, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But how would, how would we word that? Can you do a pretty good job? Well, yeah, <laughs> I think what you basically, I'm not, you know, just starting off the top of my head, I think basically what you would be saying is, is you know, maybe no to the heavy equipment. You know, they might want to do the heavy equipment and say if there's at least three feet here, there might be four or five, but we would need heavy equipment to do that. But that's going to be another thirty-five hundred, four thousand. It might be. A Do you know what I mean? Incentive, but at least on eighty-seven Gulf Street, right. you could present and ask them to utilize their. I was thinking of that. Yeah, for that one, you could actually ask him to use his. Well, I was, I was, I mean, I was thinking that. I was <laughs> like, oh, how handy! Right, right, Who right. Back home, good stuff. I'm not sure. I mean, we've uh, been working. I don't, I don't know how, how, how long that, you know, that working relationship will last. Hence why they should do their evaluation from his property line first, yeah. just in case that comes to an abrupt end. Another thing, another thing to consider is this occurred in uh, 2019, uh, five years ago. So you have had sedimentation of the area on... These, uh, these main street side of the culvert 
and you've also had degradation of the canal waterway. The, like I said, the canal still has water in it, yeah. but now it's black water. Back, back in 2019, it is, you could see in my old photographs, it's all clear water. Uh, it's not a mud puddle. It was an established wetland area before the soils were placed on it. Um, so, so to, to just walk in there and say, okay, let's take the elevation, say, underneath the culvert at this point, and let's take the elevation where the canal has water in it at this point. Um, you may not get, be getting two meetings because right. you think they're, they're, not, they're not doing in elevation. They're digging down to hitting hundred soils of vegetation, which is not going to be relevant how much well, it's going to be relevant to how they dig through it to get to the to get to the true boundary. And CI and I believe even BSC both talked about the extent of sedimentation downstream all the way to the Quinnebog at this point. Because it would have washed down there. Exactly. Well, so there is damage. Actually, no, because the canal area, which, it, well, like I said, on this map is just listed as a new road. But the canal area never filled, or, or at least I had never seen it filled to the point where it makes it all the way back to the mill pond. The mill pond that sits behind um, uh, Simsack, the small brick building to the left hand side of Golden Creek. Um, because in order for the for the water to get back to the coin bog, it has to go up to the mill pond, uh, reconnect with Lebanon Brook, and then Lebanon Brook goes through. That's exactly what CI said. That they had reason to believe that it went all the way downstream. In fact, I think the C group also said that there was aerial evidence of this historic and aerial evidence of this contamination continuing downstream the wise. So that is, I, this is part of the quantification. It's not just what's visually right there. But we have to have five years of rainstorms, floods, yeah. hurricanes. And serious, serious storm water that could have pushed it down there. 2021 was a wet year, and 2023 may have exceeded it. Which, like you said, the, uh, the only real way to tell is to dig down and find that original um, layer. Yep. Um, because everything about that is Exactly, and I feel material is not going to have any characteristics of what we Do we need it? I'm not sure how relevant that is on this. No, I mean, as it is. Yeah, for what? Well, that's what I'm saying. We can get his attention. Yeah. Is there something for planning? There's a big plan. Oh, okay. Okay. So, my suggestion is we really do need to quiz some blue sense on these Yeah, well, the yeah. suggestion from Karen is, I took note, yeah. ask CEI if that rate is inclusive of heavy equipment mm -hmm. and the use of heavy equipment and how that's contemplated, if at all. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then BSC group, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the remediation plan to the extent, like, there's things that CEI put together as far as recommendations. Yeah, yeah you can just like kind of, I literally pull, pull those bullet points and ask them, and then a hearing. If they had a hearing, it would be, you're going to want to hear from that person in person. Yeah. You're going to want them to come and, and speak to you in person. In reference to the fact that the ASC group is, is also working on the rail trail, we don't want to make it look like it's a situation where the ASC group is using their knowledge of the rail trail, which should have no error on how the weapon situation. So uh, so there's no conflict of interest that the ASC group is uh, is quantifying the weapon damage. It's not it's not saying, well geez if we do this it will improve the rail to make sure there's no It shouldn't be a conflict because it's both working for the town. Right? Yeah, okay. That's a good point though that once working that maybe the they'd be more objective. <laughs> yeah. I suppose it is being paid by two different sources. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm just 
They would tell, BSC will tell us if there's, you know what I mean? I don't think they would be quoting this if they referenced that, you know what I mean? If, if there were a conflict, yeah, they, would they wouldn't, they, they, they obviously know, you know what I mean? I'm just worried about the department coming back and saying, well, teacher, you're making all this work to improve your rail trails. You know nothing is there, can you see any way that, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I, I, that, can see, I can see no way of, uh, you know. That it would help the rail trail, what they're doing over here? Isn't the rail trail higher? I see no reasonable reason that the property owner could think we just trying to improve upon the rail trail. I, I did a beautiful job here. This is just perfect in every way, shape, or form. And, and you're just trying to turn it into uh, a beautiful rail trail. You know, when you try to turn it into that, it was very really trying to turn it That was there uh, before we even got the right money for the rail trail. I just, when I was working on it, it was an abandoned railroad track that probably specifically about the uplands issues to avoid erosion back into the wetlands. So if we can get BSC to also be provided something similar. Just for the committee's um, uh, commissions, uh, this is what I was talking about to you today. But this is actually the canal. As a matter of fact, even though the canal has been filled in, this actually shows uh, the canal was previously. So, if you could explain to them that this labeling of Lebanon Brook is incorrect, that Lebanon Brook actually comes from up here uh, underneath Ashland Avenue into the mill pond and then goes underneath the bridge into the mill pond. Is that a This is a BS. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, if you can have it on uh, the top of the website as well. Yeah. It's still the same. So, the Brook. So, if you want to show them that, and just explain. Uh, just refer to it as, um, I, I don't know, what the old canal. Okay. Well, it's, it's canal. So, it's, it's correct to say the way that Lebanon Brook is labeled is incorrect right. and should be referred to as old canal. Right. Hmm. All right. Anything on Charlton and Worcester Street? That, that those the property owners never come back to us. Has the has the problem still happened though? If they've never gotten back to us, 
Is it just like they're stewing in their own juices? Or? We're talking about the property owners with the blockage that is causing right. the problem down below. So they haven't gotten back to us. I think we haven't had enough rain for Sherry to send us any more okay. pictures. But okay. do you know what I mean? I'm sure it's still happening. Mm -hmm. um, spring's coming. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of either resending the letter mm -hmm. or And say, okay, you know, you're, yeah, we got you for filling in a wetland. They had the last couple of times I have called, they never called back. The, they, they, they tell me they're going to get an attorney to call, and then nothing. Nothing, nothing. Yeah, but things might be different now. Incidental fills? Accidental fills? Right, right. Not an intentional yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. We're not saying you did it on purpose. Like, remind me how the beaver thing works. Like, if you have a beaver dam on your property that's causing damage down, and I know there are special rules about beavers, but, but like, what, let's say they, let's say they threw trash in the in the street and it caused a problem. If they, if they, if they did it on purpose. The beavers. No, no, no. The people. Sorry, I switched back to people. The beavers. If the people threw trash in their own river and it caused problems down below. That's illegal filling. Yeah, that absolutely is. So, what if trees fall, which is what happened here, right? Yeah. I don't know. We're not removed. I'll, try, I'll, I'll call that. I'll try a nice see, but I don't think it's I haven't had any. Yeah. 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 Who was that? Oh, K and P. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure, but then, so the brick is literally migrating onto people's properties and flooding up to their houses down below. So the property owners that own where the blockage is, they should be taking care of that. Do you know what I mean? But it's causing major problems down below. It's, just, it's kind of like you have sedimentation that's come into your, this isn't sedimentation of sediment, it's sedimentation of water that's being diverted sort of because of somebody else's lack of and maintenance. We can't just say, oh, well, it's an act of God. Well, can't be an act of God, but it's still your responsibility if you own the trees from which the, uh, if they, the property that I do like to be a little more scientific. Yep, that will see. Yeah. All right, Commissioner's announcements. I have a lot of them. Okay. Go right ahead. Your side. <laughs> What? No, that was that indicating that you that know? wasn't uh, so okay. I was just trying to figure out where to start. Oh, so okay. Right ahead, Warren. Okay. Well, the Mac conference is coming up um, uh, March second. Um, so just letting everybody know. Um, and uh, if if anybody talks to you about um, Chapter sixty one, it's um, your application is due by um, the end of June, I believe. Um, so, and that's a good way to preserve your forests. Um, and uh, we went to an interesting meeting last night that the animal shelter um, has been 
resumed, and I guess it's Jerry again. <laughs> um, so they've decided the newest location that they're considering is um, up at the DPW, uh, behind the DPW. So here's the PCB thing. Here's the building. Uh, the animal shelter is supposed to be back there. Is um, a second chance? No, the town animal shelter. Second chance is on Worcester Street, I believe. Yeah. The town um, is building an animal shelter? Okay. Okay, and my question that has to do with Hong Kong is uh, there is a, a brook, I don't know, is it Katie Brook? I don't know. I remember it, it was going by underneath Charlton Street and there was a homeowner there. But if you take it back up to where they're building the animal shelter, I just don't know if if that is a consideration that we should say, hey, great, you're building this, but let's be concerned for our brook, you know, with animal waste or if they're going to exercise the dogs. Uh, um, I, I, think, I think the point you're making is to, to look at the general area because um, right. I, a long time ago, there was also a pond out there, isn't there? I'm presuming when someone submits a site plan, where we'll know whether or not they're within a resource area. Well, that's so what I, well, I was going to say. If we're doing a site walk, we could go up there and just check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's this, is, this is where that this is cotton where pond. pond. This is where that mound is. Oh, and I thought Cotton Pond was it's close to so good. Town Street's out here. This is yeah, for the storage. I think I, I think I was talking about this pond here. Oh, that pond, that's a good one for you. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, like you said, uh, I think a, a, a site plan would be, we, we need to you know, establish a site plan. And then we, uh, I, I, would, I would assume, uh, uh, no, I, I've been traveling back and forth with somebody on Route 20 lately, and it's kind of ironic to see all the efforts that we do with mm -hmm. developers and subdivisions and everything to make sure they don't encroach on the land, and then to see them uh, basically filling a swath mm -hmm. of what we to mm -hmm. increase Route 20, because the state could it, right? Uh, uh, it, so, uh, the town I'm so will give consideration to the fact that I don't think they're going to do it. I would hope that they um, consider it. Are, are you not sure you be considering it up there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it, it's a good thing to uh, bring it up. Because I've, I've brought up to a number of boards, hey, what about conservation issues? And they're like, oh, yeah, we didn't think of that. <laughs> so, so I'm just saying it to keep it on our radar. Um, yeah, it, in, in fact, they haven't scheduled another meeting, I'll let you know. It's, it's still early in the process, but the sooner we can make that aware of them, is it to make sure they don't encroach upon them. Right. They should be very concerned about the potential PCB contamination. Mm -hmm. It's all rounded up, but there's, I mean, as I understand it, there's still at least a little concern along the way. Well, I, if, I, if I remember correctly, this was going back 20 years or so, they had to um, seal all the area around the building for, for the safety of the DPW employees. So, so it's very specific. Uh, nobody's going out on the other side of the fence to start digging holes to see what's in there. Well, they're not supposed to, but the point is this one. Right, so I have to make sure that they're, they make sure that what they, where, where they put it is clean. Because they're going to have all the people and so forth. Right, so right. And it's, so it's, it's a can of worms. It, well, it's a can of worms to begin with. You know, regardless of the dogs. Right. Regardless of anything. Right. 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 As soon as you put that bucket into the ground and, and pick up, Wow, where did that come from? Right. Yeah, you just right. turned it into a super fun site that's going to cost $2 billion to do it. It's, 
And I was, I was wondering if, because um, I was asking them, like, what animals they would have, and I don't know if the default is to go to the Turtle Rescue Week, if they have amphibians or turtles. Um, so I don't know. Right now it is. Okay. I, I'm not signing us up. We are primarily a wildlife rescue, so obviously right. they cannot well, serve. I'm, I'm just rescue. curious, should, they, should I ask them if they're going to have turtle I facilities think, or... I think they it? should be comfortable mm -hmm. with a plan established ahead of time, and I would be happy to work with them mm -hmm. on that plan because they can't simply take in anybody's relinquish or they would literally swamp my rescue. Yeah, but it is, can it help is, them. It's, Right. Yes. Right. So, short answer, I'd be happy to work with them on a plan, but it's not going to be something simple of, yeah, bring them on down. Okay, no, I, I just wanted to ask yeah. them. I mean, ideally, I would like to plan to, to having space on site or being able to house things other than cats and dogs. Because if you're going to be serving an entire town's need, you should be considering about turtles, lizards, snakes, pirates, etc. Well, I was, yeah, I was, I had on my agriculture commission hat, and like, mm -hmm. what happens if something happens, like a house, a horse barn burns down or something? They need facilities like that, or somebody has a goat or whatever. Yeah, exactly. We have it planned out where right. they're going to contact. Right. Because right now I'm dealing with that for Springfield. The entire city of Springfield is leaning on us. And wow. It's not exactly yeah. an easy situation. Right. But, uh, uh, in, uh, I mean, like you said, the procedure has to be set. If, if somebody finds a woodland turtle, a local woodland turtle has been injured, that's easy. Right, that's easy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's when you start getting into an item. So, uh, a woodland turtle, you're going to uh, hopefully be able to nurse it back to health and eventually return it to the yes. side. But if you're a dragon or a dragon or a horse, obviously they're not being released. Obviously, they're not going to be sent. You're not going to ship them to Florida, uh, ship them to Arizona to find them as one of them. I've done it. <laughs> Anything else? Um, I think that's all I have. Well, I'll make a first uh, announcement for anybody who's interested in turtle conservation as well as turtle rehabilitation. Uh, the Turtle Summit will be returning on March 23rd. It will be at the Southbridge Community Center. Tickets will be available in the next week or so, and we do have a slate of speakers already lined up from the nuts and bolts of uh, wildlife rehabilitation, shell fractures to um, emergent diseases in our native populations. So that will all be happening on the 23rd of March. Uh, a friend of mine told me that she had checked out a book, um, The Tur Tiny Turtles, and uh, she was like, this is fascinating, and do you know where they live? Because this is my friend, I'm not going to help. And she was like, they're our neighbors. Yeah. And I was like, no, yeah, I know. Yep. I've actually had a recreational tourist from that who managed to figure out between Simon Montgomery's interviews on NPR mm -hmm. and what's in the book. And showed up on my front door. Oh. So, surprise. Good sleuthing. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> so, next meeting dates are March 6th and March 20th. I just wanted to let the board know that um, there will be a forthcoming RDA for uh, the transportation improvement plan work that is scheduled for the. Hey, Rotary, and I don't know that she's she's right. Right. Yes. Um, so I talked to VHB, who was leading the engineering and the permitting for that. 
because I asked in the past as well as the Conservation Commission reviewed these particular applications for the infrastructure work in the center. Um, and it has been RDA, um, particularly for Main Street, the Main Street. Um, so I suggest that you do that. And I don't know if there's, you know, it's not because of Lucy's book. I don't know if there was, you know, any other contemplation whether or not it was the intention of yeah, and I believe, well, the catch basins. But we might want to check that that's the only we covered up. The only thing we usually do when there's work in, on Main Street is is because of the catch basins, Ken needs to make sure that there was always a silt set or whatever because it goes directly into nuisance work. Have you started to identify those catch basins that go directly to the I know in some communities, you know, uh, they'll use a, a, a grid, um, the top of the catch basin will be blue, and around it, around the grid will be um, uh, blue, uh, blue. To, 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 to emphasize that, you know, don't dummy. Or, uh, presumably, DPW or another type of department has no installation. But maybe we should say, it's just a, it's a way for me to reach out to DNW and say, hey, do you guys do this? Because a lot of people think that I'm going to my trash and catch me. Right, right. It's, you know, it's just it's or right. they're dumping their oil. Oh, it was horrible. I think that's acceptable regardless of where it's coming. Yeah, well, I think that's just a lot common, so we need to indicate that. But... I think you need to go and look at your own yeah. has looked in. Yes. Like, so, well, so, they, so the other thing is... And this has been updated, so I'm sure if you, if you get uh, another version, it will still say that you More than likely. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's GIS, and yeah. so we have to figure that out. Um, I think if there's a meeting following you, is that's why mm -hmm. also Peg has been circling. <laughs> there's another oh. meeting following the Conservation Commission. In here? Oh, okay. All right. So, thank you, Commission. Motion to adjourn. Yes, motion to adjourn. 625.